Cruises are not built for social distancing. Buffets, pools, theaters are all layered on top of each other. The size of an average cabin ranges from 150 to 200 square feet, about the same as a one-car garage, and the rooms are stacked like Tetris blocks. You couldn't ask for a better incubator for infection. Yet as the coronavirus outbreak was spiraling into what became a pandemic and cruise ships began to report confirmed exposures, this has 3,600 people on board. Thousands of tourists continued to visit one of the most popular cruise destinations. The Caribbean. The $100 billion cruise industry transports some 30 million passengers around the world every year, an industry trade association said, with nearly a third of all cruise ships in the Caribbean. That's a fraction of those who travel by air, a major factor in the spread of the virus. But public health experts said cruise ships create unique opportunities for infectious diseases to spread. In February and March of 2020, as cruise ships, some carrying ill passengers, sought to dock, the Caribbean faced difficult choices on whether to close ports to avoid the possibility of infections. Epidemiologists at Yale's Public School of Health modeled different scenarios of what could happen if a passenger infected by the novel coronavirus left a cruise ship and entered a port city where there were no previous cases. Once we have uh, uh, three or five or seven infectious passengers leaving a ship, um, uh, we believe that um, almost all of the time we'd see uh, sustained transmission in the port city. The Washington Post mapped the travel of five passenger cruise ships in the Caribbean from February 20th to March 18th that transported someone who later tested positive for coronavirus. This is the story of one of those ships. The Costa Luminosa, operated by the Italy-based Costa Cruises, can carry up to 2,826 passengers and 1,050 crew members. On February 28th, the Costa Luminosa reached Ocho Rios, Jamaica, but Jamaican authorities refused to allow Italian passengers on the Costa Luminosa to disembark. The government had recently set up guidelines that banned passenger entry from countries with known outbreaks to now include Italy, South Korea, Singapore, and Iran. These Unable to unload passengers, the Luminosa left Jamaica and sailed on to Georgetown, the capital of the Cayman Islands. Upon arrival, a 68-year-old Italian man suffering a stroke was rushed from the docked ship to a hospital. He was left on the island after the ship departed later that day to undergo treatment. The Costa Luminosa finished the rest of the journey and arrived in Fort Lauderdale on March 5th where some passengers left and the ship prepared for its next trip. In the early hours of the following day, it departed, with new passengers but the same crew. <laughs> Jennifer Catrun was a passenger on that trip. She logged her experiences in daily videos. So excited. Activities on the ship were going on as usual at a time when Catrun said she was aware of the illness spreading in the world. This is one of those times, March 7th, 2020, just in case somebody's looking at this later on, in the midst of the um, coronavirus scare. While the Costa Luminosa was sailing to San Juan, Puerto Rico, cruise line executives and Jamaican government officials met in Miami to discuss guidelines for port entry to islands, Jamaican officials told the Post. On March 8th, the Costa Luminosa docked in San Juan, Puerto Rico. So pretty, so pretty, so pretty. Along with other footage of the island, including scenes from a local gathering, Cat Run filmed an ambulance leaving the Costa Luminosa. The president of this ambulance company is Carmen Cruz. Cruz said the call came from a port agent in San Juan that dispatches requests from cruise ships. Crew said they were told that the passenger had shown symptoms for two days, 
A representative of the dispatcher said that the company facilitates communications between a ship's medical staff and the local hospital, but that those parties discuss the particulars of a medical case. Costa Cruz's disputed the idea that ship officials had dismissed the possibility of the virus, saying that before the sick woman disembarked, the ship's doctor requested that she be tested for the coronavirus in Puerto Rico even though the local hospital said it was not likely a COVID-19 case, according to the company. The couple remained in San Juan for care. The Costa Luminosa left the Caribbean the next day for a week-long journey across the Atlantic. People are a little nervous about the COVID-19 panic that's going on throughout the world. Um, had messages on Cruise Critic this morning that someone was taken off the, off the ship yesterday with respiratory illnesses. Um, I don't think that's true. I saw the ambulance leaving. They were not even, there was no masks on the people that were working. None of that was going on. Remember the passenger that was dropped off in the Cayman Islands on the ship's previous voyage? Well, on March 12th, officials announced the coronavirus test results for five suspected cases, one of which was the Costa Luminosa passenger who had disembarked on February 29th. The patient is a visitor who was transferred from a cruise ship for a critical cardiac issue. By the time he was diagnosed with coronavirus, the country's first confirmed case, he had already unknowingly exposed more than 40 healthcare workers and their families, according to hospital officials. Six confirmed positive cases were tied to the passenger, officials said. The hospital was partially shut down for two weeks as it moved to contain the virus. Back on the Costa Luminosa, passengers were sent a letter, a copy of which was obtained by the Post stating there were no suspected COVID-19 cases on board, but acknowledged that a passenger had been hospitalized in Puerto Rico. We got word last night that, um, that there was nobody on board that had suspected cases of the virus. And although there's a lot of people coughing on board, um, nobody has been severe enough to go into the infirmary. So that is a huge deal. On March 13th, the Puerto Rican government announced the COVID-19 test results for the couple who had disembarked the Costa Luminosa on March 8th. Passengers on the Costa Luminosa were told about the two confirmed cases the next day on March 14th. Costa told the Post it learned of official results between March 14th and March 15th, as they were at sea on the Atlantic. We are on quarantine in her rooms. After facing port closures and quarantines, the cruise line eventually canceled the rest of the trip and was able to evacuate more sick individuals in Spain's Canary Islands before disembarking passengers in France and Italy. Catrun got off the Costa Luminosa on March 19th and flew from France to Atlanta. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention met the passengers at the airport and after taking their temperatures, allowed them to fly back home. Catrun said she was ill as of April 16th with an unknown virus, but was not able to get a COVID-19 test because she does not have typical symptoms. Puerto Rico officials announced on March 21st that the Italian woman who was evacuated from the Costa Luminosa had passed away. As of April 20th, at least 145 crew members and 48 passengers who were aboard the Luminosa had tested positive for the coronavirus, according to Costa Cruises. Costa Cruises said it passed along information to passengers as soon as the ship received it and said that while the woman was still in the hospital, Luminosa officials isolated those who were in close contact with her and then took further measures when it got the result of her test. It also noted that the company voluntarily paused all cruises on March 13th, the same day it said it received notice that the first passenger had tested positive. The Costa Luminosa wasn't the only ship that health officials tied to coronavirus cases. 
The coast of Favalosa left off passengers in three countries who officials said later tested positive. 13 cases in the Dominican Republic, 52 in Trinidad and Tobago, and two in Martinique. A passenger on the British cruise ship MS Bramer traveling the Caribbean and the Americas disembarked on March 8th in Cartagena, Colombia, and was the city's first confirmed case, local health officials said. Fred Olson Cruise Lines, the owner of the Bramer, said the guest was not displaying any known COVID-19 symptoms at the time. In statements to the Post, Cruise Lines said they followed all international regulations to prevent the spread of disease and took voluntary measures such as temperature checks and intensive sanitation measures. They disputed the idea that their ships brought the coronavirus into the region, saying that while Caribbean residents who sailed on their ships have tested positive, there is not proof they contracted the virus on board. On April 16th, Carnival CEO Arnold Donald held a conference call with reporters and defended the company's response to the COVID-19 outbreak. There was very little knowledge, you know, starting early on in February and March and whatnot. Um, you know, we aggressively managed it as we do any illness on board. We spoke to the director of the Pan American Health Organization that helps countries in the Americas combat diseases about the burden a large scale coronavirus outbreak would place on the region. So the very tiny ones, particularly those of the Eastern Caribbean, um, they they have limited capacity, limited number of healthcare workers, limited number of, of beds, limited number of the equipment that is that is necessary, particularly ventilators, etc. Best way to protect a port city is to prevent any seating events from taking place. The Yale epidemiologist found to effectively prevent cruises from causing infections in port cities, cruise ships would need to prevent all passengers from disembarking once a single person is found to be symptomatic or infected. About a week before Donald's call, the CDC extended a nearly month-old no-sale order for cruise ships in U.S. waters for as long as 100 days. The CDC said that cruise ship travel exacerbates the global spread of COVID-19 and that the pandemic had not been controlled sufficiently by the cruise ship industry.